Coleman's Small Business Banker Weekly Radio Show with your host, Bob Coleman, is brought to you by GovGex.com, the online exchange for sellers of SBA and USDA loans, and PCFS 2000, the leading financial technology services vendor providing software solutions to both the SBA lending and credit union industries. Now, we, we know the CDC acts as the conduit to fund that 504. Obviously, you have to underwrite it. But what are you telling your lending partners who do the first? Um, or I, I, we're not at that point yet. I guess the question is what will you be instructing them or telling them that they should do as a best practice on these 504 first? Well, I, let me, before I, I answer that, let me just jump in with what I think is a, you know, a significant opportunity for all lenders out there with the larger size uh, 504. Um, and, you know, particularly, though, I think for community banks that may not have uh, the ability from a lending limit size uh, to really do some of these larger transactions, let's not forget that by raising this uh, debenture amount, it also gives some of our existing borrowers that already have a 504 loan the opportunity to get another one. Perfect. Uh, and so, you know, if I'm a community bank out there, the first thing I'm going to do is look through my current portfolio and clientele um, and see, you know, who is maxed out on their SBA 504 7A and say, look, we've got no authority now. If you're looking to acquire some additional uh, space or rehab your building or, you know, open a second location, you now have the opportunity to access uh, additional authority under this program. And as we know, you know, as you go up in the loan size, there are fewer and fewer transactions. So I think one of the, the big opportunities with the larger debenture size and the larger 7A is just more authority for small businesses to access either of those programs to help them uh, g- generate more SBA lending. Let's, let's turn to marketing a little bit. Larry, now that we've halved your salary, <laughs> but, but you still, you, you, the BDO still wants to go after that new niche. One of the other takeaways I want on this, this is different lending. It's different underwriting, as Eric alluded to right at the beginning. It's a different uh, approach, sort of what, what Kurt was saying. But you're on the ground, Larry, and I want you to give us a flavor, give us a feel of, from the BDO standpoint, how are you going to have to address this new market? Well, you're going to be dealing with a, a far more sophisticated borrower than we've dealt with in the past. I think rate all of a sudden is going to matter. Quite frankly, in the typical SBA loan, the rate doesn't matter. Borrower wants the three questions answered. Let me, let me interrupt you there, Larry. Even in the constrained capital markets, you think it's going to be more critical? Yeah, I do. I do, Bob. I mean, in this level. Because all of a sudden, you're competing with the banks for a conventional loan. When you're talking about the level that we're talking about here, $4 or $5 million. So I think rate will matter. You know, on a five hundred thousand dollar loan, a quarter point's only twelve fifty a year, but it's twelve thousand five hundred on a five million dollar loan. So I think rates gonna matter. You've got to be far more sophisticated in your negotiations. I think, you know, your your level of marketing, who you go after. If for example, if you don't go after hotels, you need to be in Atlanta at that annual hotel conference that goes on there. Uh, I still think the IBBA is a good source as long as you only target business brokers that have their CBI, the professionals. But for the most part, I think it's going to be different. I think it's a niche a far above what we've typically worked in. Hey, Eric, how's that going to work for your BDOs if they're out there and they bring in a deal and all of a sudden got to go to the middle market or someone different? Do you think that's going to be a disincentive for them to bring in those deals? Yeah, I think it could be. You know, not every lender has kind of a shadow accounting agreement where they could, you know, share share income flows. Um, I think that that could be, you know, that could be an issue. I mean, ultimately, within organizations, we want to make certain the deal gets done. But especially on the larger ones, that may end up becoming, you know, a referral to the middle market where the BDO becomes X more a consultative matter, you know, where the asset perhaps isn't being booked to the SBA division or the BDO getting paid. Uh, it could be it could be a disincentive. Eric, put on your manager hat for us. Um, those existing SBA BDOs, do you believe that they can step up to that middle market, or are we talking an entirely different skill set 
um, background, uh, in, in, you know, in, in tremendous amount of training, or can they seamlessly transition? Uh, I wouldn't say it'll be a seamless transition. I think that there should be some collaboration um, with folks with middle market backgrounds because the the end customer is different. Um, if we're uh, dealing with a, a liquor store owner, sole proprietor, um, and now we have to speak to a middle market customer with a CFO, it's a different discussion, um, different financials, just a, a different level of sophistication. I think you know, our, you know, our, the, the BDO. Uh, force, uh, you know, ultimately understands financing and deals, but you know, I think it would benefit uh, for them to partner. There, there will be some recalibration and relearning. Uh, it remains to be seen. We don't have it in our plans necessarily if this thing goes to five million to begin to hire, you know, middle market lenders as BDOs. But that might be a niche that perhaps a bank may carve out in terms of providing some specialized expertise for the larger size deals. GovGex is the online platform. Banks are using to seamlessly sell their small business loans and buyers rely on to source loans for sale. We've more than 300 banks who turn to GovGex to more profitably access secondary markets. And right now we're investing heavily into enhancing GovGex. PCFS 2000 um, is a firm that's very dedicated to this industry, uh, both including the packaging origination and underwriting of SBA loans as well as uh, another platform to address the back office elements of SBA, which would include the accounting, reporting, and servicing of their SBA loan portfolio.